Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be revisiting my 2022 favorites and we're going to see if the products still hold that title or if they've fallen off or been replaced. So before we get into all that, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. 2022 was the year for base products. There are so many included in today's video, but let's start off with lip hydration. I included this, which is hilarious. This is the Lenson O Nipple Cream. So this is actually amazing if you have super dry lips. And I've been actually putting this back into my routine since it's starting to cool off and my lips are starting to get chapped. This is the best stuff to hydrate and cure your lips. It's pure lanolin, which is always the healing and ingredient in most lip masks and lip balms and such, but this is in its purest form. And it just feels like the richest, lip mask ever and it's pretty affordable and it, you get this huge tube of it on hits as you can tell by the way I'm talking about it it's still a huge favorite and if I have like super dry elbows or my knuckles are super chapped like this stuff is incredible so highly recommend that for your lips and your nips <laughs> But getting into primers and underglow products, my favorite primer was the Iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer. I actually haven't really used this this much this year because I've been in love with the e.l.f. Power Grip Primers. So I'm going to use this one today and then I'll layer on top the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, which is a great multi-use product. But today I'm going to use it as a underglow primer. I'm going to take a good bit of this. This scent is transporting me to 2022. I mean, I did use this scattered throughout the year, of course, but the e.l.f. Power Grip primers are the primer of the year for me right now. This one's really nice. It has such a nice slip to it. It feels super silky and lightweight. Then it just kind of sets down and blurs your skin, which is lovely. And it also adds like a nice radiant glow without being like too pearlescent. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of the e.l.f. Halo Glow in the shade two to my high points. I use this product quite a bit still. It's still in rotation. I think it's a really pretty product. And I've since reintroduced the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter into my life. At one point I thought it was breaking me out, but that was at a time everything was breaking me out. And now it doesn't. So great news for me. I used to think this was exactly the same as the Charlotte Tilbury, but they do have a little bit of a difference. I'll show you what it is. The e.l.f. one has a lot more coverage in comparison to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. The Hollywood Flawless Filter is much thinner, but they do have a similar pearl shift. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury one sinks into your skin that much better, but you can see here this is e.l.f. and this is Charlotte Tilbury. They have a very similar glow, like don't get me wrong, but you can just tell that this one is a bit more full coverage in comparison. But that also is a plus because I like to use this as an all-over skin tint in the summer if I want something very, very glowy and hydrating without it feeling very glowy and hydrating on my skin. It doesn't feel sticky or gloopy or tacky. It just dries down really nicely and it has a good amount of coverage so it will cover minor redness and imperfections and such. So that's what that looks like. Oh, I wanted to add it to my nose too. I have a plethora of skin tints and foundations. <laughs> so starting with skin tints, the ones I included are the Rose Ink Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum. I started to use this again recently and it's lovely. I don't really think I would consider it a favorite anymore, but I still highly, highly like it. I find it to be a little bit finicky. At the time that this looked the smoothest on me, I was wearing the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen and for some reason those two products just work together so well. But sometimes this one can be a little bit weird with other SPFs and other primers and such. It's just something I've discovered. Another similar product to that one but has a lot more coverage is the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. I love this one. Unfortunately, I have like my summer shade, so I'm not able to wear this most of the year, but it's a stunning, stunning product. It feels super thin. I would still consider this a favorite. Like I loved using this in the summer when it matched me. It's easy to rely on. It looks perfect all the time. And I just love its coverage, but its feel is so natural feeling. It just feels like a nice little hydrating serum. I also included the iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint in this one. This was like my complexion product of the year last year. I'm going to be going in with this one because it's been a while since I've reached for this, but the last two foundations in here 
are the Dior Forever Skin Glow, which is still one of my most reach for, especially for events, or my go-to base if I need my makeup to look flawless all day. It has good amount of coverage, it has a gorgeous skin finish. And my last foundation, which was my everyday foundation, was the Makeup Forever HD Skin. This one I use all the time still. Still consider this a favorite. But these two here, I feel like they have kind of fallen off for me, but we'll see how the Iconic London performs today. I'm going to be using the shade Warm Fair. Why did I wear a white turtleneck? I just wanted to live on the edge today. I'm full of it, you guys. I'm so happy I'm revisiting this one. It looks wonderful, like super blurring in areas I want it to, but it's still radiant in others, and it feels barely there. It's so thin. I don't know why I moved past this one. I'm really happy I'm revisiting it today. It's really easy to build up coverage too. I would say that this is more like a foundation, less like a skin tint, but this looks superb. I'm full of it. Moving on to concealers, I had three on my list. So starting with the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I don't know if I would consider this a top favorite anymore. There are some really promising concealers that have come out this year. One that feels like similar in this realm is the Tower 28 Concealer. And as you can see, big favorite because I purchased two over the Sephora sale. This is still a really good concealer. I just feel like I found products that are similar, but just a little bit better. I also had the Clé de Peau concealer, which is amazing for spot correcting. I'm actually going to use a little bit on my healing acne scars here because this is a great formula to do so because it has a nice matte texture but super super high coverage so it just makes those blemishes disappear and it's also really nice under the eye i've also used this as a foundation because a little goes a long way and it looks incredibly flawless and my last one i had was the lys triple fix concealer which is still one of my top favorites and most recommended concealers. It's so nice, especially if you like the kind of concealers like the Kosas Revealer Concealer or the NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer, those type of textures that feel really nice and lightweight and skincare-like. But I love the tiny, tiny pointy applicator. I'm able to really get up into my eye here. And the formula is just so, so nice. It's like one that you have to feel for yourself to understand how good it is. It's also pretty full coverage. It just erases my under eyes and it's also very brightening, but it doesn't look mask-like under my eyes, nor does it look too matte or too dewy. It just gives the desired natural effect. And I'm using the shade LN3 in this concealer. Can you see how nice that is? It's so brightening and concealing and correcting. So I would consider these two still big favorites, but this one, fell off just a little bit. I still really like it. I just have found better. <laughs> and on that same note, these have like a similar effect to it, but this is a lot more full coverage than this one, which is actually nuts. Moving on to powders, I had two on my list. The first one being the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake Powder. So I've actually been using Cupcake a lot more than Cherry Blossom, but if I'm wearing like a pink blush or pink tones on my eyes, I really like to use this one. It makes my whole makeup look, look really cohesive. The Huda Beauty Loose Setting Powders are unmatched. They're super matte, super blurring, and they set your makeup flawlessly. So I'm taking some on the Huda Beauty Powder Puff, and I'm really going to press that in. Oh, I forgot to put my nose ring in. I don't know, sometimes when I get overstimulated, I just take it out because it bugs me. <laughs> I just forgot to put it back in this morning. But there's that powder under my eyes. So flawless. And the other powder I included was the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder, which I recently repurchased and I've been using a lot on my channel. Again, it's so good. I'll use this one in a little bit because I have a lot of cream products to go in with. So we'll revisit that soon. Something really mysterious happened to one of my highlighters. It's actually the only highlighter included in my favorites last year. It's the Burt's Bees Voluminizer. And I used to mix these two shades together. I don't know what happened to my light shade. The cap completely fell off. <laughs> And it's not, like I took this out of my collection like this. There's no cap to be found. There's someone 
decapitating my makeup products on the loose. I actually, like, it was baffling. It, I, I don't, I just, I don't have an explanation. Like, the cap isn't in my collection, and I it just, I feel like I wouldn't put this back in my collection like this. And it's not like my cats know how to open my drawers, and my office is always closed. It's actually, like, I can't think about it too much. <laughs> I don't know. But I, oh, what's actually happening? This one. The product is coming out of... Is the product eating away the plastic? That must have... Well, I haven't touched these in a while, and I don't... Maybe for a good reason. <laughs> I don't... I'm actually so confused. Has this happened to anyone else? Maybe it's from continued use and, like, the little twist. Yeah, okay, this is what happens here. I might shut them too tight and then it just rips the whole little nozzle off. That's what happens. I explained it. There's not a ghost, but that still doesn't explain where the cap went for my pink one. It's just an, a mystery for another day. Um, but in the past, I would mix these two shades together to create my perfect color because the pink one was too pink and the golden one was too dark. So in the middle, they created this beautiful shade. This actually feels like the Givenchy one. I just used in Friday's video. It's super similar. I have not really used this one because it's been the year of the Rare Beauty powder highlight for me. <laughs> I haven't really used any of my other highlights, but that is actually so beautiful. It's doing something really weird on my nose. I think the e.l.f. Halo Glow and this product are fighting because I don't know what's happening to my nose, but it looks like a disaster, like really, really bad. What's happening? Okay, I fixed it. Yeah, it seems to like be really separating everything I have on my skin. Okay, what the heck? Those products are not collaborating well together at all. So I have a huge switch up on these. I'm very unimpressed <laughs> with them today. Anyways, now let's get into bronzers and contours. I have a few. So I feel like there are so many staples from last year. One of them, the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. How much I still love this product. I'm not going to be using this today because I'm going to use one of the other options. I also included the Fenty Beauty Match Sticks in the shades Amber Suede and Amber. I used these so much last year. Here are the colors swatched on my hand. So Amber and Amber Suede, beautiful tones. I still use these quite a bit, but not as often as in 2022. And I also had the NYX Wonder Sticks. So these are quite similar in tone to the Fenty Beauty Match Sticks. This is the contour side of the shade Fair, which is very similar to Amber. And this is the contour side of the shade Universal Light, which felt pretty similar to Amber Suede, just a little bit more orange toned instead of yellow toned. And the fun thing about these is that they have highlights on the other side and they're quite nice. I kind of wish I went in with these now that I'm seeing them, but what just happened added drama and that's entertaining. But those are the highlights on the bottom there. Ooh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Amber Suede from Fenty and I'm going to use the contour in Fair from NYX just so I can mix the two. This is such a good bronzer color, especially when I don't have any tan on. I feel like it's very flattering, but it doesn't add too much like red or orange warmth to my skin. It warms me up in a very flattering way. And then I'm going to add some of the shade Fair just to my cheekbones to add an extra sculpted look. And I'm blending both of these out with the Moda blending fan brush, which is back actually. Those two products are actually so similar in texture. They played really well together. I don't know if I've ever done that, but I'm happy it worked out. Super similar formula and texture and finish and everything, honestly. Up next, we have my favorite category, which is of course blush. And I have so many <laughs> to go through. So starting off, I fell in love with the Merit Blush Bombs last year. These are the newer colors that came out around the holidays last year, which they actually launched some of my newer favorite colors, Fox and the shade Stock. Stockholm. Stockholm is a nice kind of cooler toned pink. I guess it's not super cool toned. It's like a nice baby pink and fox. Fox is such a stunning color. I feel like it is similar to rose ink 
foxglove with a little bit of a twist in there, but it has that gorgeous kind of rusty tone. Looked beautiful in the summer and in the fall. I also had the rose ink blush in the shade Daylily to be specific because I think these were my 2021 favorite blushes, but I had to throw in one of the new colors in my 2022 faves. There's Daylily, which I found to be a really nice mixture of foxglove and the shade Heliotrope. This is still one of my top, top favorites and recommended for blushes. So good. And it's fun because you can also use them on your lips for like a nice monochromatic look. I use this so much. This is the Huda Beauty Cheeky Tint in the shade Rebel Red. It's a stunning, vibrant, kind of rusted red color. Oh my God, it's to die for. It was a big year for the Rare Beauty blushes and me. They came out with the shades Encouraged and Believe and I just used them nonstop. I'll actually find Encourage too. So there's Encourage and here's Believe. So Believe is just a little bit darker and this one's a little bit more pinky, but they're quite similar, honestly. But I just used these so much and I still do. Gorgeous. I'm so excited to whip this out again. This is the Say Chili Blush and I'm so happy because I think I got Jamie Page hooked on this blush too. I'm like, finally. <laughs> And she's actually the one who introduced me to this formula. She actually purchased this for me for our first collaboration. So, kind of a full circle cute moment. It's such a stunning formula and shade. It's to die for. And the last one is the About Face Cheek Freak Blush Balms. My favorite shade was specifically Get Some. I'm seeing a theme here. I was really into this type of tone. These are okay. I feel like as they aged in my collection, they kind of got patchy on me. I don't know. I haven't reached for them as much. I feel like this is one of the products that got demoted for me, but otherwise I still use and adore all the other blush formulas and I'm actually kind of putting off choosing one because I'm, I don't know which one I want to use today. Let's go say chili. I'm just too excited about it. I'm going to put some into the palm of my hand and then I'm going to apply it using my Quo Beauty angled foundation brush. As you can see, I'm inching closer and closer to where I put the highlight because it looks like butt. It does not look good. I mean, come on. <laughs> I just, that color is so good. So now I'm almost done with base. I'm just going to take some of my e.l.f. Prime and Stay powder and I use the shade Fair Light. My past ones didn't have this information on here. <laughs> and for a $4 powder, it really does it all. It's so beautiful, super blurring and diffusing. It cuts the shine, but it doesn't cut all the hydration from your skin. And it just looks really nice and perfecting. It feels a lot like the Kosas Cloud set without any of the pearlescence. This is like fully matte. So now I'm going to quickly prime my lids and do my eyebrows off camera. I didn't have any favorites in those categories. So please enjoy the kitten intermission. My eye category is quite big, so getting into it, I love the matte food eye paints from About Face. I love how they come in these nice neutral shades as well as these really fun, playful shades. These are awesome. You can use them in so many different ways as eye bases, as eyeliners, as a one and done color, or you can just really get creative with them. They always take my creative edge out. I also included the About Face Fractal Loose Glitters. They have some really stunning shifting shades in here, and you can use these on your eyes and your cheeks. Really, really pretty colors. It was a big year for the Urban Decay Moon Dust eyeshadows. The shade Space Cowboy is probably my most used product out of all of this. I use this almost every day, at least a few times a week. I love to use this all over my eye or I like to top my looks off with this if I feel like they're looking a little lackluster or too matte. 
amazing and they actually released a palette this year which i've been loving this one includes space cowboy as well as three different shades that aren't available in singles and they released three new single shades that aren't in the palettes i love the shade wild dipper it's stunning it's like a golden version i'll give some a swatch i actually have a swatching reel of all of them that's up on my channel if you want to see them a little bit closer up but that's the shade wild dipper and here's moon dust which you can see is a little bit more bronzy but it still has that magic glittery top coat Oh my god, I was completely obsessed with the NYX Glow Shots last year. I still am. Like, these are incredible liquid shadows. I love using them as, like, a metallic liner, or you can really blend them out to create kind of like a moon dust effect. You can really blend them out, and it looks like a beautiful sheer glittery top coat, or you can create, like, a metallic looking liner. They're really fun to create details on eye looks. And moving into eyeshadow palettes, I only had two options. The Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes, which came back this year, which I'm so happy about, and the Charlotte Tilbury The Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette, which is still the palette I travel with. I bring this every time I leave my house for a few days. It's just like the perfect essentials palette, and the shadows in here are incredible to work with. They have a little bit of a sheen to them, so they look really unique and rich on the eye. Super easy to blend out. They're just incredible colors, super flattering, and you can create pretty much any daily look with it. And the Ethereal Eyes Palette is so pretty. I love all of the kind of cooler toned shades and these like more subtle neutral colors and the shimmers in here are truly ethereal. They're just like the Urban Decay Moon Dust with just a little bit more oomph to them. They have kind of like a more opaque base but same it can create that beautiful glittery glossy looking top coat. And I also have quite a few eyeliners, so lots to do with the eyes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to include everything in my eye look today, but I'm, I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> For eyeliners, I love the Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline Pencils, and they came out with three new shades this year, a white, a black, and like a reddish brown, but Cocoa and Ivory are the OG for me. I love these pencils to bits, really awesome. I won't talk about this long, but the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils are amazing for the eyes and lips. I love how they're multi-use products. Really awesome to create smoky liners or any type of liner. In fact, and the last one I had was the Huda Beauty Life Liner Quick and Easy Very Brown Precision Liquid Liner. I love this to do little inner corner extensions. It has such a nice micro tip and you're able to really get good control and the formula is super long wearing. Like I could cry and it would still be there. Sometimes I wash my face and it's still there and I really have to like get in there with makeup remover. It's really awesome and long wearing for the inner corner. So I need to get creative here because there's a lot of stuff. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I really want to use this rich chocolate brown from About Face. It's the shade Cloned. I'm going to take some on the back of my hand and then I'm going to pick it up with this Smith 235 brush. I'm taking a fluffier brush with a diffused amount of that just to help to blend that in the crease. This is a really pretty one and done color. I have to be careful because I have a lot of other things to fit on my eye, but I thought that this would be a nice start off point. I'm going to grab a little bit of this shade and this shade mixed from the Ethereal Eyes Palette. And I'm going to put this in my crease to kind of soften things up. Then I wanted to use the About Face Loose Glitter in the shade Ascent which is this gorgeous green color. I'm going to tap some onto a palette on my desk here. I'm going to dampen an eyeshadow brush to pick up some of that pigment. It's such a pretty green, like look at that. It has a little bit of a lime green shift, but it looks kind of like a Christmassy color to me, I don't know. And I'm going to put this in the center to start. That about face color is so pretty. I need to use that more often on its own. It's such a pretty chocolate color. It's making me want to eat chocolate. Now I'm going to up the richness of this look using the Charlotte Tilbury palette. I'm going to dip in between the black and this dark brown. I'm just taking that deep brown and I'm going to enhance the inner corner here. I don't want to add the black in here yet. I feel like it'll be too much. I'm using the Makeup by Mario shades I used earlier. Soften this a little. 
And then what next? I'll do an inner corner extension using the Huda Beauty eyeliner. Then I'm going to take the Melt Waterline pencil in the shade Cacao and I'm going to take this on my lower lash line. We'll do a nice big wing with this, why not? I'm really just winging this, it's kind of fun. I just took the first little angled liner brush I could find. These eyeliners are so fudgy. They're so easy to use. They have really good blend and pigmentation, but then they set down super matte and they stay in place. I'm going to take a clean blending brush and I'm going to grab the light cream shade from here. And I'm gonna go from brow down because I don't like how over blended that area got. That looks more controlled now. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that about face cream. I still have some on the back of my hand, which is dangerous with my white turtleneck. It's okay. And then I'm going to put this on the remainder of my lower lash line. I'm going to take this shade right here from the ethereal eyes and I'm going to fade this off. I'm going to take the shade Ivory from Melt just to brighten up my waterline on the outer corner. So I feel like that brown one was kind of getting too close into there. And I like to kind of blend them out so it's not so opaque, but they're really nice and brightening. Now what? I feel like we can add some extra glitz and glamour. I'll take this shimmer shade from the ethereal eyes and I'm going to put this right in here and then I'll kind of follow it up into my crease. I might dampen it to get this to be really opaque. It's like a little shooting star. I'm gonna dampen it a little bit and intensify it by my inner corner. Okay, have I used most things? I guess except for moon dust. And I'm thinking maybe the white one because I feel like the bronzy tone of this one will kind of look weird against the green. I feel like the shade Cosmic might add some extra magic. Kind of brightened it up. Ooh, okay, the last thing I didn't use was the NYX Glow Shot. So I'm going to take some on my palette. <laughs> And I'm going to take a tiny, tiny little liner brush. This is a Glisten number one, and it's super, super little. And I'm going to highlight right there. <laughs> so we can say that we used it, but it also kind of looks cool. Oh, I didn't use the Makeup Forever pencil, so I'm going to use the black shade, which is the shade Whatever Black. And I'm going to really intensify my outer corner right here. <laughs> And there we are. I, s I think I used every single thing. <laughs> I did it. Okay, I'm going to repeat it on this side and I'll be right back. So here are both eyes done. Now let's move on to mascara. I had two listed in that video. So I'll put the MAC stack on this eye and the Makeup Forever Professional on this one. I will say I haven't really been using these because you know which one I've been using, the Cleo Kill Lash. So let's see how these compare. I also think that this MAC stack is pretty old. It feels pretty dry. So it's past its prime. But I do like how dark and volumizing it is. I have to work at really building this kind of volume, the Clio one, but I have to stop it or else it's gonna get into clumpy territory. But there's the MAC stack. Now I'll use the double-sided mascara. So on one side we have a little wand like this. Oh my god, I just decapitated. I maybe, I just decapitated this mascara. Maybe I'm the one who's doing it. What are you, well, what's happening? And on this side we have this mascara. Hold on, can I shove this back into this or else how the frick am I gonna hold this? Okay, all right. Crisis averted. This one brought me Marc Jacobs at Lashed vibes. And I liked how tapered the wand was because I was able to really get into my inner corner lashes. I like the way that that side looks better than the MAC stack actually. And then I'm going to use the tinier wand to really get into my lower lashes.
It's hard to tell because the MAC stack one is so old, but you can see that it's like kind of flattening my lashes, both sides honestly. The Kill Lashes magic is that it keeps my curl in my lashes and it makes them look super fanned out and full. These just kind of drag them down a bit, but the volume's kind of nice. But these have definitely been demoted. And here are the eyes all done. What do you guys think? I feel like I'm in 2015, not 2022 with these eyes, but the skin is giving 2022. Okay, so let's finish strong with the lips. Starting with lip liners, I had three different formulations. So of course, just had to quickly mention the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils. Once again, the colors are gorgeous and I love how soft of a lip line these add. I just most specifically love the colors. I also had the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in the shade Pinky Brown. I still use this often. It's such a gorgeous shade. It's very similar to my natural lip color, so I like to use this when I just want to enhance my lip shape. I just wanted to quickly mention my two favorite shades in Makeup Forever, which are Wherever Walnut and Anywhere Caffeine. Those are the two that I use the most often around my lips. Anywhere Caffeine and Wherever Walnut. And then lastly, I had the Rare Beauty lip liners. My favorites are Gifted and Strong. Gifted is a gorgeous reddish brown right here. And Strong is a really rich dark chocolate. Really, really pretty. And these match the lipsticks perfectly. I love using the shade Strong in the lip liner and the lipstick in the shade Gifted. It creates a really pretty gradation. Okay, but let's do a lip tour. I had some lip stains. So the first one was the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain. My favorite shade is Power Moves. I love that one. I think I lost it though because it was in my purse, but it's no longer there, so. This is the shade Pinkies Up though. It's really cute, kind of beigey color. I also had the Fenty Beauty lip stains. I've had these for a long time and I don't really use them. I find them to stain my lips a little patchy sometimes. And I found so many lip stains this past summer, especially from like Asian beauty brands. Romand comes to mind right away. The Glasting Water Tints or the Juicy Lasting Tints are incredible. These are just, I guess, really, really vivid colors. That's another reason why I don't really reach for these that often. But yeah, they're okay. I wouldn't say they're top favorites of mine anymore, but I like them. And then I had a couple lipsticks. The Say Lipplers were huge favorites. I pulled two shades here. Don't get excited because I think I lost my Shrek headband, okay? This is the shade Nouveau right here, which is a nice dark brown. My cat's like, you've been filming for way too long, girl. Get out of there. And the shade Modern. Really, really pretty colors. And if you blur these out, they kind of give that kind of movie lip vibe that's kind of being more popular now. Or you can really build them up for this opaque matte lip look. It's really fun. And then I had the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glows, which are still huge favorites of mine. And whenever another lip product that comes out like this, I always compare it to this one. This is like a collection staple of mine. It's an iconic holy grail. I love it. And then the last product was the Tower 28 Gloss in the shade Sesame. I haven't reached for this in forever. I kind of forgot about it. This lip gloss formula though is so, so nice. I raved about it for years and I've just kind of been venturing out and trying to change it up so it's not so repetitive on my channel all the time. Although you know I am repetitive or consistent. Let's say consistent. But yeah, what a gorgeous, consistent gloss. It's so pretty, not streaky, gorgeous tint, gorgeous lip feel, stunning. But I don't know if this color is still my favorite. I think spicy has been my number one as of late. Those Fenty stains stain. I forgot how crazy they stain. Okay, let's try to find a flattering lip combo. I would say most of these are still big favorites of mine. The Say Lip Blurs, the Moisture Glows from Makeup by Mario, the Elf, Glossy Lip Stains, and I would just round up the Tower 28 glosses. Still big favorites of mine. I guess the only product that I would say isn't is the Fenty Lip Stains. Okay, now let's find a flattering lip combo for this look. Cause this is giving very wintry vibes to me right now with the blush and the green. So I feel like if we do kind of like a pinkier color close to the blush, I think it would look nice. I'm going to line my lips with Huda Beauty Pinky Brown. I get comments all the time that people are suspicious if these are actual favorites because they never seem to get sharpened down. It's because they're mechanical pencils. You can retract them or roll them up. You don't have to sharpen these. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> 
Let's go with a little bit of Say Modern, just dabbed on, and then I might add a gloss or something. Ooh, that looks a little bit more orangey than I wanted. Let's see if the shade Rose Glow from Moist, <laughs> from Moisture. Let's see if Rose Glow from Moisture Glow, <laughs> I did it again. Let's see if Rose Glow from Makeup by Mario will even it out a little bit. I would say, yeah, I like that color. Cute, that's a lot of makeup. I had so many favorites. <laughs> So, so many favorites last year, it was insane. I have to say, I love the combination of a warm, rich, chocolatey brown and a green. I feel like a, a mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> it's cute, really nice color combination, but I have to say, most of these products are still considered huge favorites of mine. I feel like there's a lot of iconic staples that came out of 2022. I've only switched up on a few. And I can't wait to see what this year's favorites video looks like. And if you can't wait for that, I did a mid-year one. Um, so I'll link that down below. It's titled the best makeup of 2023 so far. <laughs> I honestly can't believe that most of those came out in 2022. I feel like I still use most of these on a weekly basis. But anyways, that's going to be all for me. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'll link everything I used in the description down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.